All right, so the happy day has arrived. You've got your GHC kit and you're ready to do your retrofit to the DE1 version 1.1 to get a GHC on there. And so we're just gonna walk you through the parts that are laid out here, as well as the tools that you'll need to do the job. Uh, so the first thing, as always with accessing the internals of the DE1, we'll need a T10 Torx wrench. Uh, that's how you're gonna get the main cover off and, and uh, a bunch of additional stuff. You'll also need a PH2 Phillips screwdriver. PH2 is the size, number two size. Uh, we'll also need a four millimeter Allen key. I prefer to use a long type Allen key so that on a ratchet, so that once I break the bolt free, then I can just spin it with my hands. Uh, if you don't have one of those on hand, then you're free to use a key type, or if you have a right angle uh, four millimeter, that'll work as well. Um, and then we'll need some combination of either a couple of adjustable wrenches, if you've got them, just like these, uh, that we're gonna use to uh, loosen up the steam wand a little bit on the front plate so that we can uh, kind of shift the front plate a little if we need a little bit of space to get the GEC plate underneath the hole the top of the hole for the front plate uh, where the group goes into the chassis. Um, if you have a DE1 steam wand wrench, that's helpful. Uh, you could use that, uh, but it's not necessary. Um, or if you have a pair of these, then, then uh, that, that's even better because we'll be using the 26 and the 25 millimeter sizes. Also, if you have 25 and 26 box, uh, box end wrenches, you can use those as well, or a pair of channel locks. If you're going to use something like this, uh, please be really careful of the front plate uh, because there is a pretty good opportunity to scratch it. I would also keep a needle nose close by because it helps some of the finicky work once you're inside the case. I also like to use a parts bowl to keep all of my fasteners organized as well as a small pick, uh, which also is, is helpful for moving around in the case and uh, working with small fasteners. All right, so now we'll walk through the parts involved in the GHC. The first one, and most importantly, is the cover and GHC assembly. Uh, the GHC is now part of the cover. It will come assembled like this. It will be a plastic sheet over the top of the touch pad. And inside, you'll see that there's a ground wire already mounted to one of the screws inside that mounts the PCB, which you can see through here, uh, to the cover. Uh, there's a gasket and some other things under there that give it uh, waterproofness. And uh, then we'll start to assemble things into this uh, slowly, and we'll uh, put in the ribbon cable to connect the GHC to the DC board in the DE1. Uh, this next piece is just a layer of insulation. Uh, this is the first layer of insulation above the PCB board. This is the second layer of insulation, much thinner above the PCB board. Then this is the retaining plate that holds the insulation, but also acts as the mounting plate for the GHC. Uh, if you look here, there are threaded holes and the bolts will come up from the bottom. Uh, in this machine, they would come up through here uh, but the old group support uh, doesn't have through drilled holes, so we'll be putting in a new group support, which is the uh, next part. Oh, these uh, three screws are what mount the mounting plate to the GHC and cover assembly. Uh, next, we have the new through drilled, you can see the holes are drilled through here, um, the through drilled group support, uh, so we'll be replacing the old support with that one. And then we have version 1.1 specific PCB heat isolation spacers. Uh, this is the first one that stacks into the group support. And then this is the second one that stacks on top of that. Uh, the order is important because there is a drain just in case there's ever a leak in the machine. Um, if you were to stack them the wrong way around, uh, you may block the drain with this one. So this one always goes on top. And then last, this is the insulation that sits above the group 
and provides insulation for the group cartridge heater all the way up to the PCB and the GHC and keeps everything working happily and also nice and cool to touch. Um, this, there, here, they're a very small screw and a really small um, locking washer. You can see that there. Uh, this we'll put aside because we won't need it for a while. This, this doesn't come until we've assembled the GHC and uh, group support into the machine. So I'm just gonna place that in my parts bowl. And then lastly, uh, and pretty key, is the ribbon cable that connects the GHC to the DC PCB inside the PCB compartment in the DE1. And uh, so this is the communication cable. If you don't have this cable, it will not talk with the machine. It is not Bluetooth. It's a hardwired connection, and that's the really cool thing about the GHC is that if there's ever any Bluetooth issues, you can still use the machine. So the next thing that we'll be doing is we'll start with the GHC and the first piece of insulation, as well as the cable, the communications cable. So the first thing we're gonna do is notice that on this cable, there's two sides. Uh, one side is open and you can see the crimps inside the cable and the other side is closed and you can't see the crimps. So the, on the connector on the GHC, there's an open side and a closed side. The open side of the cable where you can see the crimps is going to go on the open side of the connector. And we'll just push that straight in. It's a Molex connector and it should seat and click slightly when it's fully seated. And that's all there is to it. You just want to get that fully seated in. in. So next, we are going to, we'll slide this insulation cable uh, down to the base of the connector. And then we're going to thread the cable through the layers of insulation. And we'll start with this round layer first, the thicker round layer. And we'll need to thread the cable as well as the ribbon cable rather, the communications cable, as well as the ground wire. So we'll start with the ribbon cable. Uh, we'll wanna make sure the ribbon cable lays flat for its entire length. So just uh, be assured there's no twists in it. And then we're just going to push it through the hole in the insulation. And once we get it through the hole in the insulation and uh, through just a bit so that we have the ground cable is quite a bit shorter and we'll, we'll now have room to get the ground cable in, just push the ground cable through as well. Pull the ground cable through. And now holding both cables uh, securely with one hand, just push the insulation down. Uh, careful not to unseat the connector that you've, you've carefully seated into the PCB board and the insulation finds its way over these three posts that are for the mounting plate. So just make sure those posts have come through the holes and everything is seated properly and pushed all the way down. And we'll move on to the next layer of insulation, which is a bit thinner. And we're going to do the same thing. Make sure your wireless uh, ribbon cable is still laying flat. We'll put the connector through the insulation and then move it on through. Notice this insulation is a bit damaged because I'm, I've worked with it and been using it to make the guide, uh, but yours should be pretty clean. If it has a little bit of a cut in it, it's not a big deal um, as long as the insulation is in there. And then the same thing, we'll, we'll pull the ground cable through and uh, grab both cables and just seat the insulation down again and make sure once again that the insulation is properly lined up and the posts can protrude from the insulation. So we'll just kind of squish it in there. You don't have to be super forceful. It's really just uh, getting it seated. And there's a PCB under there, working PCB. So we want to be a bit gentle. Um, next, we're going to put the mounting plate on and it's going to be a, just about the same process. We're going to put the ribbon cable through the center of the mounting plate and then we will put the ground cable through the center of the mounting plate and just slide the mounting plate down, seat it inside the GHC. Next, we're going to find 
our holes for the posts and uh, line up the, the plate to those holes. And once we've got that all lined up, now we'll take our three screws for the plate and place uh, one in the first hole and one for each subsequent hole. Um, you'll want to make sure now that you're, you're actually in the holes for the post. And as long as you've, you're fairly certain, uh, otherwise you won't be able to thread in. And that's a key part of what we're doing here. Uh, this is the mounting plate for the GHC, so all three screws must be really secure or there will be some play in the GHC, which you don't want. Uh, once those three screws are in there, we'll just want to take a Phillips number two screwdriver and tighten them up. Uh, just make sure you're feeling some threading. That's threaded in. And now move to the second one. So now that we're here, we will get our three screws for the mounting plate and we will slide the screws into the holes. Uh, just be sure that you're properly centered over the post holes. Otherwise, there'll be nothing for the screws to thread into. They'll just be sitting on the side of the posts uh, one way or the other. And uh, it's, it's key that they, they can get into those posts because that's where the threads are. Um, if you've got it all lined up and you've got all three screws into the post, grab your number two Phillips screwdriver and just tighten up the screws, make sure they're threading. You can feel it threading there and tightening up. And then number two, and feel that tightening up and threading in. And number three, the same. So now that I've confirmed that I've got purchase on all three, I'll just finish tightening up all the way, just snug them up. They don't have to be super tight. Um, if you're working with a torque wrench, I, I would say not any tighter than maybe three or four Newton meters. Um, otherwise, just snug. It doesn't need to be super duper tight. And then you're all set with this portion. So now that is a fully assembled uh, GAC. You'll have the ribbon cable uh, coming out. Uh, the insulation will all be fully seated and the plate will also be fully seated and fully held down by the screws. And we'll have our cables coming out where they need to go. Both our ground cable, which will attach to the group and the aforementioned ribbon cable that will attach to the DC board inside the machine. Okay, so next we're going to remove the group cover from the machine, which is pretty simple. Again, the T10 Torx driver, and we're just going to take out these three T10 Torx screws that hold the cover down on the cover mounting plate. Once we get this cover off, there will be some insulation, a layer of insulation underneath that we will also remove with the cover. So we'll slide the cover up and off, it's quite simple. And then this layer of insulation, sometimes this layer will be stuck to the mounting plate, just peeled it off. Uh, you're not damaging anything, you won't be using this anymore anyhow. Um, once that's off, now we've got the cover mounting plate that we need to deal with. So we'll grab our PH2 size Phillips screwdriver. And again, we'll just remove these screws one at a time. There are five of them on version 1.0, uh, 1.1, and there are six on version 1.0. So we'll just unscrew all of those. And then the plate actually just slides straight out from the machine. And there is some more insulation underneath this plate. So the plate, you can just slide it forward uh, out from the hole in the front panel. 
uh, place that inside the group cover. You can remove this insulation as well. Again, sometimes a bit of it will stick to the, the top of the group or to the cartridge heater or one of the wires. It's not a big deal. Just peel it out of there. And now we've got access to the group. Okay, so now we're going to remove what is called the WPI, the top of the group, is bolted into the group base or the group support by these four bolts. And then it is held onto the chassis uh, by four further bolts that are located just inside the chassis on this uh, cross member, a bracket that supports them. So for all of those bolts, all eight of them, we're going to use a four millimeter hex wrench and we'll just loosen those bolts, crack them all free. And then I usually just use the bit and spin them out. Uh, these just get them all the way out of the threads, but you can leave the bolt in the WPI. And now on the last bolt, we'll want to have a hand under the group because the group bayonet, which is what we insert the portafilter into it, or I call it the portafilter lock ring, that will be loose now. And you don't want it to just fall down and bounce off the front face of the machine and scratch it. Um, lastly, the water line, this blue line here, will be inside of the bayonet. So just slide the bayonet uh, forward and down and it will come free. You can just place that on the side and now we'll work on those four bolts inside the chassis. Um, I'll start with the one closest to the furthest edge and loosen that up until it is free. Uh, same with the second one. And then the third, you'll need to snake through some wires here to get access to all of them. And now the fourth. And once that's free, you don't really need to support the group. It, it should, the support should just hang there, um, but you will need to support the WI, the WPI in a moment. Um, we'll now take a set of needle nose pliers and just lift the bolts out. If the, the locking washer underneath comes away with the bolt, great. Uh, if it doesn't, or if it falls into the machine, don't worry about it, we'll recover it. Um, but the needle nose are helpful because the, the space is a bit tight under there. This uh, bolt is the most difficult. You need to move the wires out of the way a bit to get to it. And I usually use, leave the locking washers inside the support. So the next step is to simply lift the WPI out of the support with the bolts in it. Hold the WPI up and simply pull the support out of the machine. And now you can let the WPI hang down, uh, but again, just take care that you don't let it bounce off the front plate. Um, but the WPI can stay right there. As you can see, I have three of the lock washers inside. I'll take those out because we're gonna reuse those. Uh, one of them has fallen into the machine, so I'll need to recover that before we take the next step. So quickly, before we move on, uh, you'll see in the old support, these two spacers are inside. The uh, longer one has a lip that comes over the top, is on top, the uh, more round one is underneath, and they sit here, and the WPI sits right on top of that, the water path isolator. And that just isolates heat from the carriage of the machine. Uh, and also so that it's everything's cool to the touch. Uh, there's also another PCB isolator that is up here. Um, and that also isolates heat from the chassis. Uh, and you'll just need to make sure that you position it well because there are holes in it for the bolts. And so you'll need to be properly lined up uh, and you'll probably bump it a bit when you put the new uh, support in, the new through bolted support, this guy right here. And uh, so it'll be slightly misaligned. You'll just need to realign it. The, the pick that I showed you earlier is particularly good for that. Uh, so next, we're going to insert our heat isolation spacers. The more round one, two millimeters, and they both say top, uh, but that's just denoting the top, not the bottom of the spacer. Um, it's not uh, top and bottom. These are, they, they're both marked top. Um, so we're going to go with the two millimeter spacer first. 
uh, insert that into the support. It has cutouts, so it fits right in perfectly. Uh, and next, we're going to insert the 0.8 millimeter isolator in. And once we've got that, we're going to lift up the WPI and in the reverse of what we did before, insert the support into the hole in the chassis and lower the WPI into the new support and put all the bolts into their holes through the PCB heat isolators. And then next we'll work to get the bolts back into the support in the chassis. Okay, so now we're going to install the GHC uh, that we put together before with the cables onto the machine. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a towel and just lay it over the top of the machine because we're gonna lay the GHC upside down on the machine and we don't wanna scratch the glass. You'll have a protective plastic cover on there. Uh, but still, it's best practice to uh, have something soft up top here. Uh, so we'll just turn the, the um, GHC over like this and just lay it up on top of the machine. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is take our insulation for the group. Uh, you can see where it would insert here. Um, we won't be inserting it yet. We're going to need to, again, feed the cables through. Um, so there should be a small cutout. If there isn't, it's, it's very simple. Just make a make a cross here um, with a razor knife or with a, a regular knife. And we're going to feed the cable. Again, make sure the cable lays flat. There's no twist in it. And we'll just feed the connector for the cable through that insulation and pull it through. Um, just to, also, there's this plastic covering so that the... Uh, Wires don't get cut when we reinsert them into the machine. So just feed it, um, just till there's a, a little bit hanging through. And now we're going to put the ground cable through as well. Uh, so feed that through and pull it a little bit snug. And now we're going to take that uh, small screw and washer that I uh, said we wouldn't be using for a little while. Uh, and we're going to install the ground wire to the group. So I'm grabbing my washer and my little screw and we'll put the lock washer on the screw. We will position the ground cable. The terminal for the ground cable is going to go in this threaded hole right here in the group. And uh, it's just next to the cartridge heater. It's the only one that's free. So we'll uh, put the flat side of the ring terminal down and then we will insert the screw through that and screw it into the group again with a PH2 size screwdriver. Um, the screw might look quite small, but it is a PH2 head. Um, so now, just takes a moment because everything's pretty tight in there. Uh, but it should screw down into the group. And you just want it to be nice and snug because that's the ground for the GHC. Uh, once that is complete, the next thing that we'll do is lift the GHC, um, move your towel a bit, and we're going to now feed the cable for the GHC underneath these tubes, the, the brown supply tube for the group, and into the chassis. Uh, the reason we slide it underneath those tubes is so that there is no danger of the cable for the GHC being cut by the uh, sharp edges of the sheet metal body. And we'll just feed that underneath. And you can kind of lay it on top for now. We're going to reroute it, but um, just, just for the purposes of the time being, we'll uh, leave it up top. So now we've got this uh, fed through. Uh, we need to seat the insulation all the way into the group 
and pull the uh, ground cable through as well uh, and the ribbon cable. So as long as the ribbon cable is pretty snug, uh, we'll pull that through and we will seat the insulation. Obviously, if you've got a, a partner in crime, this is a good time to have a second set of hands because there's a lot going on. Um, so now as we lower the GHC, we'll just pull on the cable. Don't yank on it now because we've got to, uh, we don't want to pull the, the uh, connector out. So we'll take a pause now and uh, we're going to loosen the front plate next. So next, we're going to access the PCB compartment. I've removed my towel. Uh, we're going to route this so that we can get it into the connector and the DC PCB. Uh, first, we're gonna need to remove the lid to the PCB compartment with this one PH2 screw on the side. So we'll just loosen up that screw and remove it. And once we've got it out, now we can just pull the lid straight up off the top. Uh, you may also find that on some of the earlier version 1.1 machines and all of the version 1.0 machines for later on, uh, that the lid might just be attached with tape. And if it is, uh, it's not uh, ruin your warranty tape, it's just tape. Uh, so just peel the tape and, and lift the lid off. Um, either way, it's no problem. Um, the next thing that we'll do is route the cable properly. And what we're going to want to do is route the ribbon cable underneath the bracket or the arch, the manifold arch that holds all of the manifolds. So we'll uh, just route the connector through and under here, pull it up, help push it through. And once we've got it routed around, again, we want to try to avoid twisting the cable as much as we can. Um, keep it pretty flat, uh, but some twists are gonna gonna happen sometimes. Um, the next thing that we'll do is route it through this cable grommet. Uh, I like to route it underneath all of these hoses and over toward where the cable grommet is, around the back of the mixing and auxiliary manifolds, which are these two small manifolds stacked in the back of the arch. Uh, and then we're just gonna route it through this grommet with all the other cables. You can put it right on top and just pull it through the grommet. And you wanna pull through any slack cause you're gonna wanna have a little bit of cable to work with uh, when you're getting into the connector. And that's uh, all set and ready to now access the PCB compartment and plug it in. So next we're just going to loosen up the front plate. And the reason for this is there is a metal mounting plate that's a bit thicker than the old one for the group cover. And it really makes the, the uh, group have a really solid interface. But it's quite snug with the original front plate. Uh, so we just loosen the front plate a little bit so we have some room to uh, move and to manipulate as we work. Uh, for the front nut on the steam wand, we're going to use a 26 millimeter wrench or our adjustables or a... Um, channel lock or something like that. And on the back side, this brass nut on the back side, we're gonna use a 25 millimeter. So we'll just pop the um, wrench onto each nut and just loosen it up a bit. Uh, it doesn't have to be super loose. Um, once it's loosened up a little, you can just loosen it so we can uh, manipulate the wand easily and the front plate is uh, loose. The next thing we'll do is loosen the three T10 Torx screws in the front plate. Uh, you could remove them entirely uh, as well. Um, I find that that works best. You may find that you have enough space to just loosen them a little bit, but I do find that having a little more room to move is preferable and makes the process go a little bit smoother. So I'll remove all three of these T10 torque screws and have um, the ability to manipulate the front plate pretty easily after that. So once I've gotten to that stage, now the front plate can shift up and down quite a bit. And the next step that we're 
going to do relies on that. We'll lift the front plate about as high as we can and we'll slide the metal lip for that new mounting plate underneath. Uh, once we've got that all set, um, we can either tighten the front plate back in place or tighten the uh, GHC down first to the plate. And that's uh, what I prefer to do. So we have these longer bolts uh, that are, they're either T10, uh, some of them have hex threads. Uh, these are T10. Um, there are five holes up underneath the group for the mounting of the GHC to the plate. Um, we'll push it through the center front hole first and then tighten it, uh, not super tight, but just enough that it's pulled down a bit. Um, next, I like to do the back corners. Uh, they're uh, in the back of the GHC underneath. There are holes. You could invert the machine for this step, but with the cable uh, sticking out the top, it's, um, and with the loosened front panel, it gets a little bit dicey. So I like to just do this step upside down. Again, we're not snugging any of these up because we may need to move them around a little bit, move the, the uh, GHC around a little bit in order to get one of the, the next bolts threaded and properly aligned. So I just get them tight enough. And now the two side holes, I will um, get bolts into those and snug them up just a little bit. And once I've got all five of these bolts in and threaded, then we can go back around and, and snug them up. And, uh, and the order I'd like to do that is the uh, front uh, center first and just uh, bring it pretty snug. And then the rear corners next. And then the side bolts after that. And once they're all kind of nice and tight, uh, we can move on to refastening the front plate and getting that snugged up really well, which goes pretty quickly. And once we're here, we've got everything snug. Now the front plate you can see is actually still pretty loose and, and easy to manipulate. So we'll take our three T10 screws and pop them back into the holes. And this time we can just snug them right up. Um, one at a time, just leave it a little bit loose, but we, uh, you don't need to do any kind of special order here. You can just pop them into the holes and if you need to move the plate a little bit to have access to the threads, uh, just leave them loose enough that you can do so. And then now that the third one's in there, make it tight and then tighten up the other two and we'll move back to the steam wand. And with the steam wand, we'll just uh, hand tighten the brass nut on the back uh, until it's pretty snug. And then we'll switch to our wrenches again to fully snug up the, uh, the two nuts against one another. And we'll just, again, just being careful of the front plate because uh, we don't want to scratch it or, or dent it uh, with our wrenches. And once we've got that snugged up, we can recenter our wand. And we now have a GHC installed. And uh, all we need to do now is route the cable 
uh, under the arch to the PCB compartment and plug it into the DC PCB and we will have wired control of the uh, DE1. Okay, so now we've got one more connector to connect. It's small, um, it's a six pin Molex. And I find that working in the PCB compartment, it's really helpful to have a light source, uh, extra helpful if you can mount it to your head. So wherever you're looking, the light is. Uh, if you have a, a flashlight or a drop light, that'll work too. Just, you'll have to get the angles right. Um, so I'm just gonna pop this on so I can show you where we're headed right now. Uh, if you look in the top of the machine, this, these two PCB boards, this is the AC supply. Uh, this is the DC PSU power supply unit um, that feeds the DC PCB. Um, the DC PCB, the low voltage PCB, is the one that houses the uh, computer chip that runs the machine as a brain for the machine. And the connector for the GHC is down here right next to this uh, strap cable that, that jumps the two boards to one another, this empty connector right here, this plastic Molex connector, is the one that we're aiming for. And you can see that unless you have very tiny hands, it's almost impossible to get in and work with it. So what we're gonna do instead is access the PC compa the compartment from the side. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're going to remove these three screws, one, two, three, and the plate that holds the DC PSU is going to come away. So I'll start by just taking out two of the screws. And then on the last one, as you remove the final screw, you're going to wanna to support the side plate because the DC PSU is a bit heavy and it could cause the whole plate to come crashing down and bounce off the side of the legs and scratch the machine. Uh, so I usually just hold the plate tight against the machine while unscrewing the other screw, the last screw. And then once it's all set, now I'll use two hands to support it and just pull it away from the machine and lay it down. As you can see, there's still some cables in the way. So what I like to do is disconnect these uh, top cables just to give myself a little bit more room to work. Um, there is a little lever on each of these connectors and we'll just open the lever and pull the connector straight up and out. Uh, I will tuck the connectors into the main body of the machine. And the second one is a two pin, uh, white or clear, however you see it. And then a four pin, clear connector with smaller wires, which feeds the pumps. And once I've gotten all those out of the way, now the last thing that's helpful to have out of the way is the strap connector that connects the two boards together. And that just pulls straight out. Uh, you can wiggle it a bit and it just pulls straight out and off the pins. There's no locking mechanism on it. And now you can see that we have a pretty uh, clear um, run to where that connector is. And if when you come back up to the top of the machine, now you can see in from the top. And again, that is the open side of the Molex connector. And just as before, we're going to use the open side of the connector on the harness. Uh, so the open side is the one where you can see the crimps. Uh, the closed side is the one when it's just all plastic on the back. So we want the open side facing the open side of the connector. So what I like to do is just kind of angle the connector a little bit so that I can get it in there and then just tilt it into the hole in the connector, slide my other finger down to help out and manipulate it a bit. Uh, this could take you a couple tries. Um, it certainly did me in the, uh, the first few times I installed these. So just be super patient because you don't want to bend the pins, uh, but eventually you'll be able to seat that connector. And all you want to do is make sure that the uh, connector on the Molex is all the way pushed in. Uh, and if that's the case, then you're all set. Now, there's a, a key part of the next step that uh, I'm going to show you a close up of the strap connector because it seems easy. You just pop the connector back onto the pins on each board, but there's a uh, 
there's a common pitfall that would short either one of the boards if it happens. So we'll move to that next. So now we're just gonna focus on one possible pitfall of this whole operation, and it involves reconnecting this ribbon cable to these two boards. Um, this is the AC board on the left. This is the DC board on the right. If you were looking through the machine from the front, this is how they would appear mounted to the back wall. Uh, this ribbon cable just jumps the two boards and it mounts to these sets of pins here. Um, it's impossible to misalign it vertically uh, this way. It won't connect uh, because there's a, a spot outside and that is too wide for the pins to separate. However, it is possible to only install one row of pins. And if you do that, it'll look like that. The pins will be sticking outside of the connector and that is wrong. You can see that the, the, the connector is uh, misaligned on the board. Uh, you can also do this the opposite way uh, so that the pins are sticking out this side of the connector. What you want is to make sure that both rows of pins are in both rows of holes on the connector. So when you look at the connector from either side, there are no exposed pins. And that is for both boards. So when you're reconnecting this cable, just triple check and make sure that this cable is properly seated on those pins inside the machine. So now I'll pop it back into the machine so you can see how that works. Uh, I'll just reach into the machine put the connector on the DC board side first, make sure it is properly aligned and everything is happy in there. Uh, again, just like the other connector, there's not a lot of space to work, but if you now take a look at the connector, there are no pins on that side sticking out and on the opposite side you can oh it's a little tough on the angle there ah there you go um there are no pins on that side so the connector is properly inserted and then we'll do the same on the ac side we'll move the connector in and connect it onto the two rows of pins just like so and fully seat both of them all the way down uh, again, you can see that there are no pins on this side of the connector, on the AC side, and then on that side of the connector, no exposed pins. So we're all good. So the next thing that we'll do is reconnect to all the connections we took off before. First, the pump connector, the four pin connector, and just push it down until that little click. So we have positive lock. Next, this is the group heater connector, and we'll insert that into its slot and again, push it until it clicks and we have positive lock. And lastly, we will reconnect the heater cable and until it clicks and we're all set. Um, we'll probably need to manipulate the cables a little bit so they fit under the lid. That's not a problem. The next thing that we'll do is reinsert the screws for the side panel and reattach the side panel. So last, we'll just reattach the side panel with the PSU to close up the PCB compartment, and then we'll pop the uh, lid back on. So uh, you can just kind of align the side panel, uh, get the wires out of the way if they're in the way. Uh, you might need to check the wires underneath that come off the relay, um, but just get everything so that it's, uh, you can line up the holes for the side panel. Uh, again, this is a good time if you have some help uh, to have an extra set of hands and you can as you can see, it gets a little bit, um, it gets a little bit finagly at this part, but you can do it uh, by yourself, a little bit of practice, just support the plate with one hand and use the other to get the screw in. And once that screw is just uh, uh, basically hand tight, uh, you can much more easily um, attach the other two screws. Um, the frame on the DE1, is a sum of its parts. And each member uh, kind of holds uh, with a plate or a uh, adjoining plate or this arch, everything kind of holds together. So sometimes the holes will shift a little bit. You just need to uh, shift it back to find the threads and uh, where the screw hole is. 
and if you you shift it properly you'll you'll get engagement with the threads and get the screw in and once that screws in i'd leave it a little bit loose and uh, start the next one again just so you can get that proper alignment uh, just be careful of cross threading screws they're stainless steel screws threading into aluminum so you don't want to uh, cross thread a screw and strip the aluminum um, once these are all set and snug you don't have to go crazy uh, just a little bit tight we will reinstall the uh, pcb lid and uh, all we do is just pop that on top turn the machine around uh, just so we can get a, a good view and we will reinsert our one securing screw or if you're one of the lucky ones with tape just uh, re-adhere the tape to the sides and you are all set that's all that's all we've got to do so we have completed the project aside from reinstalling the main cover, uh, which is just those four T10 screws on either side, and we'll get to that next. So it may seem odd to take another step just for something simple like reinstalling the cover, but there is an alignment to the cover that is important. Uh, you'll see this little film here and also the disc for the steely stand for the tablet to magnetized to. Uh, this tape is pretty important. It's Kapton tape and it is an insulative barrier for the connections for the pumps. And the pumps are located, if viewing the machine from the front of the machine, on the right side of the machine, which uh, as we're viewing it now is the far side of the machine, and the heaters are on this side. Uh, in the unlikely event that one of the pumps were to rattle free and the connectors made contact with the side of the casing, this tape would prevent the casing from grounding out the pumps and uh, short-circuiting that circuit. Uh, so it's important that this tape is uh, aligned properly on the machine. So when you're putting it onto the machine, the tape will be, in the, again, in this uh, view, on the far side, but viewing it from the front, it would be on the right side of the machine. So I'm gonna slide the cover back on from the back, and then uh, one by one, we're just going to replace all of the T10 torque screws. And we'll do that. Uh, I like to start in the bottom ones first. Uh, again, I don't tighten them all the way up, just like the rest of the screws. It's a lot easier to align everything that way. And I just pop them all in loosely. And once they're in loosely and we've got all four in, then we can snug everything back up because we've got positive alignment. So we'll snug these four bolts up now and spin the machine around and do the other side. Uh, I like to, when I'm, I'm working with the machine, I like to remove the water tank and all the other doodads. Obviously you'll take the tablet off because you're, you're taking the cover off, but it's really helpful uh, just to have the water tank off and a port filter, um, just nothing to snag on. Uh, having the water tank out makes the machine uh, quite a bit lighter and easier to manipulate and move around on the table. Um, and just less likely if it, there was an uh, unfortunate topple or something like that, you won't break the water tank. Um, that's about it, it's pretty, pretty simple stuff. And once we've got this cover back on, you have completed your GHC mission and now you have a, uh, a working GHC. So again, just like on the other side, uh, don't snug these up until the last one. The last one we can tighten all the way uh, and then tighten up the other three. And we are all set. We've got a GHC installed version 1.1 machine. Uh, the next thing that we'll do is uh, turn it on and test the GHC. So the next step, obviously, we'll need to fill up the water tank and then power the machine on. So once we've got the water tank filled and reinserted into the machine, we will power her on and we'll focus our attention on the top of the unit now. Now, if you've updated your firmware to the latest uh, version firmware, the machine will auto sense that the GHC is connected. You'll have spinning white lights for a moment while the new firmware programs the new firmware into the GHC. And then you'll have yellow lights as it goes through its check sequence, the normal uh, five clicks of the valves, two buzzes of the pumps, and then now we'll hear the sequential 
ratcheting up a pressure to check the pressure sensor. Uh, sucking some water up now. So once we get enough pressure into the water chamber, these pumps were completely dry, so it's taking a little bit. But now it's going to ratchet against the pressure sensor and it breaks free. And once you start to see these red lights, this is the heating sequence. So now the heaters inside are heating. Uh, and even without the tablet, you can tell that the, uh, the machine is heating up. And once this reaches full round to 12 o'clock, uh, the machine will come into the ready state, at which point we should connect the tablet for the first time. All right, we're coming down the home stretch here. So we've got the tablet and the app hooked up to the machine. We're all paired up. I've put a drip tray back underneath to catch some water while we do some testing of functions. And we'll just go through a couple things. So if you've done everything right, now the tablet will not be able to initiate functions anymore. Only the GHC will be able to do that. We've explained that that's for our URL certification. That is not going to change anytime soon. So you'll notice if I press start for Espresso on the tablet, it won't do anything except it will light up the appropriate area on the group, uh, guiding you to use the function from the GHC instead. Uh, so now we'll, we will start an Espresso function from the GHC and you'll see it does its uh, normal preheating. Everything is as normal on the app and the tablet. There's nothing different. It will go through its preheating and then we should uh, start into the profile and we'll see some dispensed water down here, hopefully. Everything's going good. Yeah, there's our profile has started. Uh, you can see this, uh, Blue light is for the, the flow level, which is currently at four mils per second, uh, just as in the profile. And this is our pressure, which is uh, basically zero. Um, I'm gonna stop it now, but you can see that the, the graph is working as usual. Uh, it's going through its final purge now and, and getting rid of any over temp water and uh, coming back around with the goal, finishing up. And now when we get back into the ready state, we will test the flush function. So you'll notice now, as we go around the dial, we don't need to jump to the flush tab up here. If we just start a flush from down here, the tablet and the app will switch to the flush tab automatically, just like that. You see we've got flush water coming out, so we're all set. Hit stop in the middle of the group again. And next, uh, same thing with the hot water function at 12 o'clock, if we touch hot water, it'll switch to hot water on the app here, and then we'll get hot water dispensed. We'll stop again in the center of the GHC. And lastly, for steam, we'll have the same thing. We'll, we'll touch here, and it will switch to the steam interface on the tablet. We'll get some steam going. And uh, this time I'll stop it from the group, uh, from the tablet rather, and I'll show you that you can stop functions with the tablet, you just can't start them. And that's uh, just a bit of a safety function, so that's if uh, anything were to get wacky or out of control, you can kind of just tap in the easiest place and you'll be, you'll be all set. So everything is uh, working as properly. I, I hope it is on your end as well. And you're, you're coming down the home stretch now, but the last interesting thing I'll show you is now you don't even need the tablet. If you were just to use the machine on a regular basis and you have your, your uh, profile set up and you really just uh, don't want to fool with the graphs until the weekend when you have a little more time, you can exit the app uh, and uh, turn everything off. You can just power down the tablet entirely and uh, unplug it, take it off the machine. Uh, you could pop it in a drawer. And now all we've got is a machine. And if we press and hold in the center of the GHC, you'll see the purple go around, you'll get a green flash, and now the machine is in ready state. Now, obviously the machine's been warmed up already. Uh, if it was cold and you did this, then it would go through its uh, check sequence again and the warming sequence. And uh, you'll see that we can start our espresso function just as we did before. Uh, I'm not gonna go through full into it. Um, I'm just gonna stop it right there and let it finish up. Uh, same thing with flush. We've got access to all of our functions with no tablet at all. So again, if uh, you're more interested in just making a bit of coffee than uh, interfacing with the app, or if you've uh, broken your tablet or the uh, tablet has died or something like that, you can still use the machine. So uh, congratulations on the uh, switchover and enjoy 
your new V1.1 with uh, a GHC mounted to the top. Essentially, you've just converted your machine into a V1.3. Cheers all.